Hello everyone. Let us try to see a two phase lock protocol in order to implement isolation. Now, when I talk about lock based protocol, a transaction cannot access, read or write the data unless it obtains a suitable lock. In a two phase locking protocol, it ensures that transaction consist, ensures consistency by employing set of rules which says it has to uh, obtain appropriate lock before accessing or modifying the data, thus preventing any conflict and maintaining data integrity throughout the transaction's life cycle. How it works? It divides the transaction execution phases into three components. The first phase, it begins with acquiring locks. So, it requests permission for the lock. It says that I want to read data item A, so shared lock, data item B, shared lock, data item C may be exclusive lock. As it goes on working, it acquires the locks required. Then the second phase, the transaction then obtains all the uh, locks in the second part. The third phase begins when it starts releasing the locks, when the first lock is released. So, the transaction cannot demand any new locks in the third phase, it can only release, it can only unlock the locks that it has used, acquired. That is why we say two phase basically, it is shrinking and uh, diminishing. So, in a two phase locking protocol, there are two phases, the growing phase and the shrinking phase. So, if you see a growing phase is going to access is going to access all the locks here, it is going to acquire, it is growing. So, as it continues its execution, as it is performing the transaction, it acquires all the required locks. So, if you see here from 1 to 3, it is the growing phase. Once it has acquired all the required locks, it continues in this locked point and performs all the operations. And as it completes the operations on the data item, it starts releasing the locks. So, this is going to be a shrinking phase where it releases the locks it acquired one by one. The point to be noted is at this particular phase, once it has started releasing the locks, it cannot acquire any more locks or otherwise at this locked point, it is going to uh, perform the operations based on all the locks it has acquired and then once it completes, it starts releasing the lock. So, here it cannot acquire any new locks. So, if you see this particular schedule, wherein transaction T1 from here to here, it is the growing phase. Okay? and then it remains at the locked phase here and here it is the shrinking phase. Whereas, in this transaction T2, from here to here it is the growing phase and here you have a locked phase or locked point and here you have the shrinking phase. So, that is the why in the name two phase protocol. So, growing and shrinking. So, what are the pros and cons of this protocol? Acquiring locks is which lock it wants, all these things we have seen earlier. Whenever it has read operation, it will apply shared lock. And when one particular uh, transaction is holding a shared lock, it cannot request for the exclusive lock. Some other transaction cannot request for the exclusive lock on the same data item, whereas it can apply for the shared lock. Because you know that conflict, if any one of the write operation is there, then there will be conflict. Read write or write write or uh, write read, both all the three will lead to conflict. So, if a exclusive lock has to be applied, it has to see that no other transaction is holding the same, uh, holding any kind of lock on that particular data item. Whereas, if you are talking about a shared lock, any number of transaction can have it. So, that particular things and all we have already read. So, what we are seeing here is only the performance of your two phase lock protocol, how it applies and releases its locks. So, what are the benefits of locking protocol, two phase locking protocol? It ensures serializability because you know you are accessing or you are working in isolation 
whenever you are modifying common data you will ensure that it is done in isolation so you will not have a dirty read and things like that concurrency by allowing multiple transaction to acquire the locks and release them two phase protocol increases the concurrency leading to the increased throughput and performance cascading rollbacks are avoided because you ensure that you apply for lock and you see to that committed data only is read you release the lock after you have committed so now uncommitted reads that is why you can avoid cascading rollbacks but what is the drawbacks of this deadlocks when two or more transactions are indefinitely waiting for the lock for a resource locked by another uh, particular transaction it is a situation of deadlock we'll see that example because of that reduced concurrency if one transaction is holding a lock for the long time the other transaction need that lock will be blocked which is also wanting to apply or read or modify that particular data item will get blocked overhead there is a time and cost associated with acquiring and releasing the lock and memory overhead for maintaining the lock table which particular data item has been locked by which transaction and which type of lock all these things has to be maintained starvation it is possible that transactions get repeatedly delayed if the other transaction are continuously requiring requesting and acquiring the lock all these concepts you have also seen in your operating system in concurrent execution or concurrent processes so similar things similar ideology here also okay there are certain variations in two phase locking protocol they are strict two phase locking rigorous two phase locking or conservative two phase lock what happens a strict two phase locking what we have seen earlier is exclusive locks are held by the transaction released only after committing so in spite of being two phase that is all the locks are acquired only in the uh, growing phase and released only in the shrinking phase will hold apart from that what is ensured is exclusive lock is released only after committing that data so it can ensure consistency and serializability that is why there is no uh, cascading rollback it is cascadeless and the schedule is recoverable because you ensure serializability rigorous two phase protocol in this what you are doing is both exclusive as well as shared locks are released only after the transaction is committed even the shared lock is not released that means there is no explicitly shrinking phase so where locks are released during the transaction instead locks are released only at the end of the trans when you are done with everything you are going to release all the locks together you apply acquire all the locks you perform you complete you release all the locks so this is it ensure schedule uh, recoverable schedule at cascadeless coming to conservative two phase locking protocol here before you start it's like your deadlock avoidance what you have seen earlier in operating system where you are particularly assessing all the resources so you are declaring something called as your read set and write set before the transaction execution and it enforces pre locking hmm, of all the access resources so what happens is if everything is not available it will wait it will postpone the beginning of the transaction a while till it requires everything okay so it will wait if necessary items can't be locked so this avoids locking any item if pre require uh, declared requirement is in met that means when it wants it says that these are the things available if that is not there it will wait because of which deadlock can be avoided so this is about conservative two phase locking we were talking about deadlock situation possible in a uh, two phase locking protocol let's try to see as you know deadlock is uh, nothing but uh, two transactions waiting indefinitely for a resource held by other transactions okay so a deadlock can be resolved by aborting the transaction to break that particular loop you see that there is a loop here to break that loop you can abort one of the transaction so that the other can get that particular resource complete and then this can be started so remember there are two transactions t1 and t2 if the completion of 
transaction T1 is dependent on the completion of transaction T2 and the completion of T2 is in turn dependent on transaction T1, this is called as deadlock situation. So, process T1 is acquires a lock on resource A and T2 acquires a lock on resource B. Now, T2 requires uh, lock on A to complete and T1 requires lock on B to complete which is leading to a deadlock situation. So, anyway whatever deadlock situation you have seen in operating system similar concept can be applied here to understand. But remember two phase protocol can implement or otherwise will have deadlocks whereas we can go for timestamp also wherein we can avoid deadlocks easily because of the ordering. Thank you. See you in the next session.